week, and uh, wow, those people up there, I, it's a, it was a beautiful place to visit, but it's a different, uh, world. You know, it's a different world up there, I would not want to live up there, that's for sure, but now, out where Colville was, where Mary and I went to see where Tommy lived, uh, it was beautiful, I mean, and when he say, it says you guys, when he said he lived on top of the mountain, I'm telling you guys, he lived on top of the mountain. <laughs> Like we wound up up this little old road, it looked like a private drive, and it was maybe as wide as <coughs> half that pew. It looked like it was about as wide as this little table here, and uh, it went and wound up just like this, all, all the way to the top. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was crazy, and then half of it was iced up. I mean. They were Spokane, they didn't have much snow, but out in Colville, it was white. Everywhere you saw it was it was snow covered, at least 10, 15 inches still on the ground, you know. So, uh, but Mary and I was able, God made it to where we could get up there and get uh, 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 everything accomplished that we needed to get accomplished to come back. And and uh, so it was a, uh, uh, a good trip uh, under some circumstances. And uh, again, Bloody Mountain, if, uh, I mean, if we ever get a chance to go back, it'd be a great place just to go visit, you know. So, uh, beautiful view and from where Tommy's uh, travel trailer was, you could actually see the Canadian border, it's like that, how close he was. So it's, and I think it was five mountain ranges there that the view covered that you could see. Uh, and uh, it was a pretty, pretty neat place, you know. So. Uh, this morning we are going to be in the Heavenly Highway hymns. Uh, and on this morning uh, we are going to turn to hymn one, higher ground. And uh, uh, we'll sing uh, all three verses there. Well, the uh, uh, first, second, and the last verse of higher ground. <coughs> and we'll start on three. On three. One, two, three. I proceed no Yeah. 
we, and, and then the next thing I know, I get a text saying, uh, we get a text from Ashley saying, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we didn't last 30 minutes. They said it came it was formed from a storm somewhere there around that area, and then it just kind of just came down this way. Yeah. And then and just getting it for a period of time. As Louise said, we went through four seasons in 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but it was some big things. Big things. Yeah, I mean, cotton ball things, huh? Well, this goes to prove, you know, they say, you know, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait around about 30 minutes, it'll change. That's, uh, really that is, that's the way it is, you know. So, uh, but anyway, uh, happy birthday to our February birthdays. Uh, we have uh, Mary on the 4th, and of course, uh, we need to uh, make sure that we can get this information to either Jackie or, uh, yeah, uh, to uh, Miss Andre. Uh, so, Mary's birthday was the 4th, and then our son James was the 5th, and our oldest granddaughter's uh, birthday was February 6th. And then Alex Carpenter is also on the sixth, and uh, and then uh, Jeannie, uh, for the French wife, is the twenty third, and then Miss Terry Regular is on the twenty second, and uh, and then we also had another birthday too, wasn't it? It was one other birthday. Anybody else? Can you think? I think it was. I thought it was one other. Maybe not. Got an anniversary this month. Oh, uh, anniversary! Yeah, we had uh, Mary and I have an anniversary this month as well. So. We but, uh, too. Huh? Yeah, you need it. 21st. I hear you. And tomorrow's Valentine's. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow will be Valentine's Day. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, don't forget. <laughs> it'll be a long weekend. Yes. Be a long, well, one week. <laughs> yes, so, a week from. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't want to start the week out wrong. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, remember all of those that are on our uh, prayer list as well. We added a few this morning um, to our prayer list, uh, those that are going back to school and stuff. Uh, and again, for our uh, food giveaway, uh, Brother Roger and uh, Frank mentioned uh, in prayer uh, as well that, uh, you know, let's keep in prayer that uh, they would, uh, those come and pick up the food would also either be going to some church of their choice or start coming to our church uh, so that we can help uh, with their spiritual growth. Uh, so I don't think I missed anything yet. Uh, and if I did, we'll take up we'll take that up uh, afterwards. Yes. The breakfast is coming with you. Yes, the the uh, men's and women's breakfast is going to be this weekend, uh, this Saturday morning at eight o'clock at Mama's, Mama's kitchen. Mama's kitchen. Yeah, Mama's uh, Mama's kitchen in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mama's kitchen. So. Uh, so uh, make sure that you guys, if you can be there, be there and uh, enjoy some good fellowship and some good food. So. Anything else? I don't think I've, I think I've got everything. So, all right. So let's uh, push forward to uh, number 14. Uh, Love, good to me. We'll sing all three verses. Number 14. Hey. Yeah. It's like a reading baptism up here. I, I spilled my water all over the place. Uh, thanks, Billy, for helping me clean that up. So, uh, let it to me. We'll sing all three verses. On three. One, two, three. I will sing the deep and sing all the means for sure. Then I will be we stand with him singing the rest of the world. But the master of the sea
28. We'll sing all three verses. <clears throat> Bring it in the sheets. One, two, three. So we in the morning, so we the madness, so we in the meantime and the beauty. Praying for the harvest, at the time of evening, we should rightly go and sing, praying in the sheets, praying in the leaves, praying in the leaves, we should rightly go and sing, praying in the sheets, living in the Oh, 
So God, we give you all the honor, praise, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So right here, if you're ever in doubt of what the pastors, the Sunday school teachers' jobs are, it tells you. Absolutely. Now, ministers get assigned a lot of duties by the people of the church that aren't necessarily what God calls us to. But <laughs> tells you that pastors and teachers are for the equipping of the saints. Now, do you know who the saints are? Christians. Us. Amen. Amen. The people in the pews. <clears throat> People are the members of the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. For the equipping of the Christians for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. 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 So preachers or teachers are to train and equip the body <clears throat> to be able to handle the ministry of the gospel. Amen. That's right. In other words, everybody wants to place it on two or three people in the church, and that's not it. <coughs> two or three people in the church are to help train up the body to go out and minister for Jesus Christ as a unit. The edification of the body. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to the perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Now notice it says till we all come to the fullness. Now I'm not going to stand up here and lock me and say amen. So don't stand out there and say you are. The Christian life is a daily walk. Amen. That's right. It's a daily choice. Actually, it's every second. But right. we have to decide how we're going to live and who we're going to live for. The world and the little G God of this world system, are we going to stand up and say, No, I stand for God? Amen. And what does it mean to stand for God? Well, I've accepted Jesus Christ. Great. Salvation. That's the first step. You can't go anywhere. Without it. People try all the time, and I've heard, well, as soon as I clean my life up, I'm going to mm -hmm. come back up to the church. You can try, and some people may have a little success, but without Jesus Christ, it's not going to be lasting. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. It takes Jesus Christ and us serving Him to change our heart in our lives. But it also takes sound doctrine and sound teaching to bring us to the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith. In other words, bring us to a point where we all believe correct doctrine. A lot of people out there think, ooh, we don't need to get on that. That's divisive. No, that's Bible. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Doctrine is just what the Bible says. There's nothing being hard or scared. That we should no longer be children tossed about to and fro and cared about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness 
that's a deceitful plot. Now, I know people, and I know a man right now who is definitely one who is tossed around by everyone in the doctrine. Every flea out there he jumps on and wants to ride for a while. Try that. See how it takes. No. We have to ground ourselves in God's Word Amen. and stick to it. That's right. Now there's a lot of people out there crafting the gospel to tickle people's ears. Why do they tickle people's ears? Because that brings in more people. Instead of preaching a service, they are presenting a shadow. Amen. And a lot of people like that. And there are some of them that are just as legitimate as they can be that do that. But there's an awful lot of them also that preach to itching ears what people want to hear so they won't be offended and they'll come back. That's not the gospel message. If somebody living in total sin and depravity can sit through a church service and not be convicted, then the gospel's not being preached. Amen. Because the gospel convicts of sin, of which we are all sinners. Some of us are saved sinners, but we're all sinners. So there are those out there with deceitful plans and plans, but whether they be speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into Him who is the head of Christ. So those leaders of the church, their job is to edify the body, that the body may go out and speak the true word of Jesus Christ. But we're all to study the Word of God, come to agreement on doctrine, what the Word of God says, and then we pass this on in love. Amen. You're not going to win anybody through hate. You're not going to win anybody by sticking your nose in the air and thinking you're better than me. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> Remember. Romans 5, 8. But Christ, while we were yet sinners, died for us. So we reach out to the world in love, but we do not harness or harass or that's not the word of God. We go <clears throat> take the truth and throw it back. So we don't offend. The truth is the truth that has to be told so that it can convict the heart of sin so that that person is willing to give their life and soul to Jesus Christ. Amen. From whom the body joined and knit together by whatever joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. What's that saying? Every part of the church is important. Now, if we're going to go out and grow plants, some of us grow flowers, some gardens for food. But however you do it, except for the weeds that come up in my yard, it takes care. You've got to till the ground up, and you've got to plant the seeds, 
You've got to water, and then you've got to fertilize, and then you've got to watch them grow. I never talked to them or sung to them individually. I have seen what happens when you withhold care. You withhold care, what happens? They die. That's very similar to what happens to people in the body of Christ if they're not cared for. They wither and die. But it's the job of the body to edify the body. So if you know to somebody that's not here, pick up the phone and call. See what's going on. Remember, you do it in love. Amen. You don't call them up, you aren't here. You sin an even. What's wrong with you? <laughs> no. It won't ever come back. But you find out what's going on. Maybe probably. That way, the body tends the body. But also, the body has to be willing to come together under teaching to know what to go out and do. Just like a plant needs water, fertilizer, tender loving care. And at the end, you need to get something you can eat for a beautiful flower with proper care. With no care, you like me, you get a dead plant. So it isn't good for anything but to uh, dump the dirt out. Start over. I like succulents. They don't take much care. But everyone in the body comes together. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind. Oh my. Number one, who are these Gentiles? I thought Gentiles were anyone who wasn't Jewish. <laughs> And that's why the Jews looked at it. And as far as the Jews were concerned, all the Gentiles were good for it was firewood for hell. You know, Father Abraham would stand at the entrance to hell and grab all the Jews out, but put all the Gentiles in. Then the church came along and slowly built up where the church was mainly non-Jewish believers. But it didn't start that way. It started with Jewish people who believed in the Messiah. But this does call for something. And it's a little bit scary. It calls for us as Christians to stand apart from the world. There's certain things that the world does that we say no. Take these Black Lives Matter, what they call protests, burning, looting, beatings. Christians shouldn't do that. No matter what color we are. We are to hold ourselves to a higher standard. We're not to think the same way the world does. We don't accept every whim that they're pushing about sexual orientation. As far as God is concerned, He made male and He made female. Men yeah. are. And no matter what a person calls themselves or does to themselves, they will always be male or female. Amen. Amen. Why don't you get some hate mail about that one? 
Some of the things that the law spoke are fine. We say, wait. <clears throat> We're not for just laying around doing drugs and expecting the world to hand everything to us on the flat. God says if they don't work, they don't eat. But they're correct. You're not asking any questions when they come through for food. I'm letting God sort that out. Amen. Uh, but later on, we're also going to see that God says, let he who steals, steal no longer. I, I agree with that. We shouldn't steal. But also it says that we may have, okay, well that's good too. And that we may have to give those who don't. In other words, we as Christians are to go from takers to givers. We're to work. We're to have an occupation. <coughs> and if we're retired and that pass out, we can have ministries that we do. There's always something that we can do for others. But we do it as a body. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Did you know that this word of God is spiritually discerned? I've heard people that have doctors in the doctors in theology, and they were the dumbest spiritual people I've ever listened to. Yes. They knew the Bible, but they had no discernment of what it was actually saying. Sure. Christians are different. Mm -hmm. Why? One, when we are saved, the Holy Spirit is our earnest of our salvation. We are baptized by the Holy Spirit when we are saved. Mm -hmm. That is a one-time process. So we all have the Holy Spirit in us. Now a Christian can also be in fear by the Holy Spirit that will come on for works of the ministry. But we all have the Spirit dwelling within us and we all can turn to God through prayer and supplication seek His face and His answers. We have godly friends that we can turn to. You see, the lost do not have that. Therefore, they are spiritually blind. Because it always amazes me how some people can think that lying, cheating, stealing, killing, all of that is fine. And I'm like, no, it's not fine. But you see, they are spiritually blind. In their mind, it's perfectly okay to go take Something that belongs to somebody else. And if that person protects their property and shoots somebody, oh, they thought their material things were worth more than that life. Well, evidently the thief thought the same thing. Because they walked in the house with an armed individual and tried to steal what wasn't there. And think that it's perfectly all right. No. God says, Thou shalt not steal. Amen. He says, You should not lie, sure. and you should not murder. But the lost are spiritually ignorant, and their heart becomes hardened. And right now we have a big problem with the 
group of people that believe that they are owed something. And our Constitution says life, liberty, and the pursuit Amen. of happiness. It doesn't guarantee it. It says that we have the right to pursue it. Having an understanding of darkness, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past failing, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work on cleanliness with greediness. We've seen a whole year pass of this. And I'm not trying to be political here. But you just look at the difference between the protest last year and this truckers protest in Canada. So far they haven't been building burned or looting. <coughs> no one's been beaten <coughs> or killed. <coughs> a right and a wrong way, but some people are so blinded that they don't see it. Goes on to say, verse 20, but you have not so learned Christ. <coughs> mm. So what's the deal? Bible also says those with more knowledge are more accountable. So as we have accepted Jesus Christ, God has filled our heart with His Spirit. Our eyes are spiritually open, but it still takes daily devotion to keep our lives and our hearts and our mind on the right thing. It doesn't come natural. And you may look at me and say, well, Brother Rick, I'm a Christian now. Why does it not just come natural? Well, we still live in this Bible. Amen. It still has its lust and desires, and it really doesn't care if chocolate's bad for you. <laughs> it likes the taste, and it wants it. And it'd be a hundred pounds if you'd give it to it. And we live in a sinful world. And it's awful easy to get caught up in the sinful things of this world. But God calls us to tell the truth and to stand apart. Amen. Now in Sunday school today we looked at David. David went into the territory of the enemy and thought he was okay because he was going on raids against other enemies and then going in and giving it to the people of Judah. But it came to the point where one of the kings of the Philistines said, look, you're coming with me to war. So David got himself in a bit of a pickle. Because he wasn't standing up in God's power and trusting God to take care of him. So he went over to the world. And I look at that kind of as a Christian that keeps his mouth shut and hides in the shadows of the world. In the world system. It's like these people who work side to side to each other for 20 years and then one day sees a Bible and the other guy says, I didn't know you were a Christian. Yeah, yeah, I am. Well, I am too. Been sitting side to side for 20 years. Didn't have a clue. That's not the way we're to be. We know what we believe. We believe what we believe. We're being spiritually instructed, which means that we need to have 
corporate Bible study and private Bible study. Bible study. Yeah, easy for me to say. Amen. Bible study. Amen. And make a conscious effort to live how God would have us. Amen. And that's a righteous and holy life. But I'm going to tell you, when we do, the world is going to notice. The world's going to notice. Why? Because we're pointing out their sin. Can be even just by the way we live and the truth we tell. Even though we approach others in love, sometimes you've got to call see and see. And a lot of lifestyles are sinful nowadays. But we're all guilty of sin, aren't we? Yeah. So it's kind of hard to cast a stone. That's not our job. Our job is to add it. To make sure that everybody has the truth proclaimed. Mm -hmm. That they know where they stand and what's going to happen. And we know enough about the end of the Bible to know that there's only two destinations. Mm -hmm. Only two. When everything is boiled down to the end time, there's going to be those that go to heaven to be with God for all eternity and those who go to hell for all eternity totally separated from the love and grace of God. Amen. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, then we're going to be with Him forever in heaven. But till we get there, it takes a daily choice as to how we are going to live. Are we going to live for God and stand out in the world? Or are we going to try to hide in the world so we're not persecuted by the world? <clears throat> choice is ours. God doesn't force us to do anything. He's not going to drive anybody kicking and screaming out of hell to take them to hell. So, I just pray with Brother Jim's coming. <coughs> we would follow what God has laid on our heart. He calls us to be up front. I knew the phrase I wanted and I forgot. Huh? Manipulation. Okay, if y'all remember where that goes, place it there. <laughs> but it calls us to be different. Why in the world would anybody want to come to Christianity if we look just like the world? There's no insane. <clears throat> but then again, we're not supposed to go up, woe well, is me, I can't do this and I can't do that. No, Christians have more fun and joy than anybody. Yeah. <clears throat> but we got to show it. And we got to live it. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, now is the time. Today <laughs> is the day for salvation. Amen. Come to Him today. Everybody rise and turn in your hymnals to 109. 109. I surrender all. 109. <clears throat> we'll start on three. One, two, three. All Jesus, I surrender all.
dismiss us in prayer, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you once again, Lord, for this day. For many blessings. We thank you for this message that's been brought today, Lord. Yes. The message you would have to apply it to our lives where we need to, Lord. And as we've said before, Lord, just be with, continue to be with us. Food, give away that we're giving away for you, Lord. Help us to do it for the right reasons, Lord, and, and be sure that we invite the people to come back to your house, Lord. These are just as we go our separate ways and bring us back to the point.